and interrupted um, more than a dozen of those attacks by shutting terrorist cells down around the world. They've always been worried since the first attack on the World Trade Center that there would be another bold strike on U.S. soil. Mm. And, of course, there are any number of targets which have been high on counterintelligence's list in New York City, the Lincoln Tunnel, the United Nations, the Holland Tunnel, uh, the FBI headquarters, not to mention all of the city civic buildings which John mentions. President Bush is, by the way, going to speak very shortly to the nation about this, and then he's going to return to Washington. And we have on the phone our principal aviation analyst and expert, John Nance. Good morning, John. Morning, Peter. What would you like to contribute to this? Because uh, one knows that it is indeed possible to fly an aircraft into a building if one intends to do so. If one intends to do so, that's correct. And unfortunately, when you've got something that has been as, uh, as worrisome a target uh, as, uh, as the World Trade Center, regardless of the way we've hardened it up uh, on the ground, they have apparently, whoever they is, picked the one vulnerable area. The thing that is most disturbing to me uh, is not only the, uh, uh, the, the fact, of course, that there are people more than likely in that building that have been directly affected by this, but that we may have an innocent load of passengers. Uh, the flash of that second aircraft across the screen uh, is disturbingly close to what you would call the plan form of an Airbus A319 or an Airbus 320. Uh, also of a 767 or something of that nature. And just uh, a, that's a large airplane. J John, let me go slowly with you because, and we'll, a we'll actually put it on the screen again, very slowly, so that we can see it come across screen. Are you able to identify specifically the type of aircraft by looking at this videotape as it comes across? Can we roll I'm, that, please? I'm watching that right uh, as it comes across the screen. And uh, it, it is more than likely not a Boeing 737. That, uh, that profile, Peter, is very close to an Airbus uh, A320, A319. And who flies the Airbus 320, 318? We have quite a few airlines. Okay, so... Uh, uh, very few private ones. All right, and, and, with, and John uh, comports a little bit here hey, with at least these right uh, initial reports that the FBI is investigating reports of a hijacking uh, just before the second crash uh, occurred. We had no... Um, John, let me just ask you one other technical question about just flying in the World Trade Centers. When yes. the first, when the first uh, incident occurred, um, it was reasonable for people to suspect that there that was an accident. Yes. Um, from a flying point of view, is the World Trade Center always something to worry about if you're taking off from one of New York City's airports? Not really. Uh, and the fact that we have had all these years since that B-25 crashed into the Empire State Building tells you a lot about the flight paths around New York City. You, you have to be so disastrously out of contact and off course, and so many things would have to go wrong to imperil any of the buildings in Manhattan. The fact that it hasn't happened tells us uh, really how rare a situation it would have to be. Uh, John, the FAA immediately asked for New York City airports to suspend operations. We can confirm that Newark and LaGuardia have closed. I'm and Kennedy confirm? and uh, Teterboro and Westchester, yes. they've essentially asked all airports mm -hmm. within a 20-mile ra radius to put a hold on anything taken off. Teeter Bear Airport, which is in New Jersey, just on the west side of the Hudson River in Westchester, which is maybe 40, 50 miles north of New York City. They're all suspended operations. Standard, uh, easy to do, John, quick to do, it seems to have been so. Fortunately, very, very quick to do because uh, they're all controlled by air traffic control towers and they can put a halt to the operations with one phone call. Okay, John Nance, thanks very much. Call us back, will you, if you, uh, if you, if you learn anything. Peter, one of the difficulties they're going to face, as you can glean from this picture here is uh, the people who are trapped and need to be rescued are on the upper floors but you see the plume of smoke covers the roof the last explosion was at the bottom of the building and the smoke rose up but they were able to make a series of daring rescues by landing and they've trained for this and retrained landing police helicopters on the roofs of the twin towers and pulling people out it's going to be very difficult uh, since the roofs are now enveloped in smoke for the police helicopters, which are arriving mm -hmm. at a landing zone now, just below the World Trade Center, to be able to get up there till that smoke dissipates. Um, and that's where they had expected to pull a lot of people out uh, this time because they had so much success the last time. Mm -hmm. it, similarly, John, if you look at the two buildings, it does appear that at least in the, in the northern tower there, or the left tower as you see it on the screen, uh, below the incident, the building at least looks on the outside to be reasonably secure. Um, and people will have a long, horrendous, terrifying walk down in a darkened building 
um, but will at least be able to get out on the ground. By the way, Claire Shipman, uh, ABC's Claire Shipman, just called in. To, she's been checking with the FBI. She also says that the FBI had no warning whatsoever. Their crisis management operation in Washington is in place uh, in conjunction with the Federal Aviation Administration. They are all now, which makes perfect sense, focusing on uh, the recovery of survivors. Um, the New York Stock Exchange has, uh, has delayed indefinitely its opening uh, today. Uh, this, this will just have not only an extraordinary effect on the national psyche, one surmises, um, dissimilar perhaps but, but from what happened in Oklahoma City, but a very clear reminder to those of us in the United States that terrorism of a huge magnitude with which we're somewhat more accustomed in the Middle East and in Africa given the attacks on the US embassies a couple of summers ago but a reminder again that as far as international terrorism is concerned and people's anger and even desperation on this occasion with the United States is going to find itself manifest um, here on US soil John is the here's the president now in in Florida I wonder if everybody knows there what's going on. We'll listen to him. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a difficult moment for America. I, um, unfortunately, will be going back to Washington after my remarks. Secretary of Rod Page and Lieutenant Governor <clears throat> will take the podium and discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at the Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now, if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. President clearly shaken, I think one can say, um, confirming what we think we all knew, which was that two aircraft um, in an act of terrorism uh, crashed into the twin trade towners. Nobody was quite certain about the first one uh, at the very outset, but the president absolutely, having talked to the vice president, the governor of New York, the director of the FBI, uh, now believing and confirming that we have two terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center and the president saying the two things which a president must say at a moment like this terrorism will not stand uh, which is an important thing for him to say but not always necessarily effective and God bless the victims and their families John Miller what are you picking up on the police radio um, we'll there, was a, there was a bit of a stir a moment ago because LaGuardia Tower reported urgently that there was another aircraft moving fast in the no-fly zone. Now they've contacted that aircraft and they say it's a military aircraft that's rushed to the scene to uh, enforce the no-fly zone and literally be a presence in the area in case there is another plane headed for the building so that there'll be some uh, at least armed aircraft up to confront it. Just think for a second, John, how, how you have drawn an extraordinary parallel. We, we think of no-fly zones as being in Something southern in Iraq. and northern Iraq, where the Iraqis are not allowed to fly, and if they do fly, are going to be shot down. Now we have a no-fly zone um, all around the lower part of New York City and perhaps on the, on the northern area, too. All of the area's airports closed down and armed American aircraft in the air to shoot down anybody else who wants to take a shot at the place. I mean, those, those are the reports that are coming yeah. across the radio now, and, and if they're true, it's, it's quite incredible and certainly unprecedented. Well, it, it would also suggest, uh, as best you can tell, looking at it from this very sort of antiseptic uh, environment that we are all in in our newsrooms, 
is that the reaction has been fairly quick. New York City has an Office of Emergency Management. It's over here on the west side. It's, it's a great bunker. Um, which the city ironically, it's, it's located in the World Trade Center complex, although not in the in the Twin Towers. Just right north next door, of, north of the Trade Towers, right. in, in the World Trade Center, in the other northern World Trade Center there. And on an occasion like this, this is not one I, they they absolutely anticipate when they get going. They're talking very concerned with chemical and biological warfare. They've got extensive plans about that, which they very often demonstrate to the press.